Well, hey everybody, I'm John Redlin. This is my review of AHS 1984, Episode 2, titled Mr. Jingles. And yes, a brief recap of Episode 1. Bunch of uh, teens, played by 20-somethings, go to a camp that has been shut down for years. There's a woman that has a special connection to the place and wants to reopen it to uh, live her life and get past a tragedy. That tragedy was in the form of a killer with the nickname Mr. Jingles, who killed a bunch of people and thought he killed Margaret back in 1970. He didn't. She survived. He uh, he was put away by her. And then years later, breaks out of prison and is now back at Camp Redwood to kill everybody, including Margaret. So that's a bit of a brief recap there. I have really enjoyed this season so far, and we're only two episodes in. Now, we're it's only a 10-episode season, so they're really going to move fast on this. This also reminds me a bit of Dead of Summer. And I mean, I, I, don't get me wrong, this is better, but I like Dead of Summer just because it captured that nice, you know, slasher feel of a camp that was besieged by evil. And that that's kind of the cool thing here about this. Though so this is like straight slasher and has a little bit of supernatural stuff. But anyway, we start off with uh, Karen, might as well call the doctor, uh, her Dr. Karen Loomis, because it's a Michael Myers, Dr. Loomis callback. <clears throat> but she arrives at Margaret's uh, cabin, wants to confront and say, hey, you can't open this camp. You know, he has broken out of prison. Mr. Jingles has broken out of prison. He is going to come get you. He's going to kill everybody at this camp. He wants you for putting him away. And he has a psychotic obsession with this place, as anybody would, even though, like, that's pretty much the whole point of being a killer is you're a, psych a psychotic human being. She refuses, says, I'm not going to let him dictate my life. And then, okay, Karen, after wanting to speak to the manager, and technically did because Margaret runs the place, she leaves, gets a flat tire, and it ends up, this truck shows up and is going to help her, sort of. But Karen then sees this Mr. Jingle. So she rolls up the window and then he bashes out the window, pulls her out, stabs her, kills her. That's a pretty cool thing. And, of course, Mr. Jingles likes to take ears because it's a very eerie way of handling, you know, uh, taking trophies from his victims. I'm sorry. I had to say that. But <clears throat> now we get to, uh, you know, the opening credits. And I want to point out throughout the opening credits, but also throughout the entire episode and first episode, Great music, great way being filmed. This has been fabulous. They've captured the slasher feel absolutely perfectly. We thank it, Margaret. And by the way, Margaret, played by Leslie Grossman, really, really good in this. It's been good in the last couple seasons. Um, she's still demanding purity among the counselors. Um, you know, Billy Lord, Emma Roberts, and Cody Fern, and a few, and few others. But those are the main ones. And then the more adult guy that was in the Jane Fonda video, the one that him and Billy Lord had a little bit of a thing. That, would, that was kind of funny and... I mean, who wouldn't want to get that close to Billy Lord, honestly? <clears throat> she, she's really good, and I really hope she has a long career. So, um, Brooke and Montana are talking. Brooke says, well, you know, you, you, you don't know exactly what has happened to me. And then she explains, and in the form of flashbacks, Brooke is going to be married. Turns out that the guy she was going to marry is really, really jealous. Thought he had slept, or she had slept with the best man. Because, you know, the bride and groom don't see each other the day before the wedding. It's bad luck apparently. <clears throat> it's been a tradition going on for a while. So then uh, what happens is the groom shoots the best man because he doesn't believe it and then shoots himself. After he shoots the best man, White Wedding starts playing and I absolutely lost it. I popped. This was great. This was a great use of music. I love how they use these. these th this is great stuff and I love how bloody it is. I love how cool it is. I really, really enjoy just how they, just the slasher feel of it. I, I, ju I just love it. But I pop big for that scene. And then <clears throat> we get Xavier, uh, played by Cody, who's being black, uh, blackmailed by some guy named Blake, who, um, who you know, basically Xavier did a porn, a, a porno, but he wants to be taken as a serious actor. Blake is kind of holding it over his head, saying, you're going to work for me, this kind of stuff. And Xavier says, wait, I have another guy. And it's that, you know, that counselor guy that was with Billy Lord for, uh, you know, with Montana's character for a little bit in the first episode. Wait, I got a better idea. I can offer you this guy. So then um, Blake ends up looking through this, like, little peep glory hole thing in the shower with the men's shower and stuff like that. Because the men are showering at night because they must be pure in the morning. And then the women shower in the morning so they can start off the, the morning pure, I guess. I don't know. Margaret's a little bit weird like that because she found God after being after being almost killed and having her, oh yeah, her fucking ear taken off. So anyway, Blake's looking through there and all, you know, <clears throat> admiring, you know, the scenery and all, and all, and all the members in the shower and then gets stabbed. 
and that was actually pretty cool. You get, you get stabbed, like, you know, from behind, like, right like that. I, I wanted to clarify because then I realized how else it would sound. So he's dead. They're killing off a lot of characters already. They're not going to have a lot of characters left. They're going to have to, like, you know, maybe... They really should introduce more people so they could have more victims, but they probably will over time. <clears throat> so that was cool. He's dead. And then the Night Stalker, we later find out his name is Richard. Um, and he... He's trying to get at Brooke, and he's trying to stab her, and you'd think for a guy that's apparently good at killing, he's really bad at killing somebody that's very, very inept, but yeah, he doesn't get Brooke, that happens, she gets away, and then he guts uh, the hitchhiker named Jonah, but then a little bit later, Jonah shows up again, and he stabs him again in the neck, well, I mean, he stabbed him in the neck, uh, the gut and the neck before, and then stabs him in the neck, and he still doesn't die, he disappeared, what the hell's going on, well, he gets the tag from him. It turns out that Jonah's a ghost, and he has just been around for <clears throat> since 1970 because he can't leave the place because his body is, or his soul is connected there. Um, so anyway, Blake's body gets found by everybody while well, everybody's still alive, and it's like, oh God, oh God, we gotta get away, we gotta get away, uh, we gotta get to the van, so they're gonna get to the van eventually. Well, the Night Stalker goes to, you know, Richard, goes to Margaret's cabin. She fixes them up and talks to him and everything, and they make a deal. She says, hey, there's this really bad guy around here. I believe in you. I believe there is good in you, and I believe with your particular set of skills, no, he is not uh, Liam Neeson from Taken, that you could uh, take care of this killer. So that's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens there. I mean, even though we don't really get much more beyond that, we will in other episodes. Yeah, that happens, and then Richard, like, you know, um, brings up his past also like during this and talks about how he got hit in the back of the head with a swing and started having seizures and got taught um about you know killings from like a cousin of his who was in the uh vietnam war and that's where richard you know came up with his idea to start killing people and stuff like that and i believe said he killed his first uh, victim in the ninth grade so okay whatever but again they make a deal maybe we're gonna see richard um and we're gonna see we're gonna see richard and mr jingles face off and Richard's probably going to die. Or I think he almost won, and then he's going to die. <clears throat> uh, Cody driving the van. They drive the camp counselor van. He's like, okay, we got to get away. We got to get away. And instantly crashes. Like, crashes within, like, 30 seconds. That was that was hilarious. And then, no oh, way we can get keys to these other vehicles, but they're all the way back in the cabins. And we got to go back to camp, you know, to, to murder death camp. Uh, camp Redwood, a.k.a. So... Uh, Margaret's talking to Jonah, finds out that he's dead. I mean, obviously, because Jonah's like, why are you older? But why am I still this? It's 1970. You look so much different and all that. And then <clears throat> they're in one of the cabins searching for the keys. Well, everybody is. Everybody's left main characters and side characters and stuff like that. And then, uh, Cody's having a bit of a breakdown because he feels bad for bringing everybody there. And then there's a knock, slam, slam, slam at the door. So, okay, what's going on? Who was it at the door? Well, we're going to find out next episode. It's probably going to be Margaret trying to get in, and it's not actually going to be the killer. Or maybe it is. Who the hell knows? With the with the uh, teases for the next episode, I think maybe it might actually be Mr. Jingles or somebody trying to get to them. So we'll see. I've been enjoying this uh, season so far, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.